man like Ben Tet. Must be doing his family proud. Very long way from home. Very talented man. That's before you even get to the to the mouse and keyboard, like the part where he's just communicating in three languages for one team. It's astonishing. It's outstanding. That man, again, from a region of Counter-Strike where they have some of the least exposure, along with like Oceania, if you will, they have the least exposure to, like the least regular exposure to European Counter-Strike, let's say, because you need to have that contrast. So you learn, you know, what you can do at home, you can't do, like generally speaking, it's kind of like the old school arcades where you'd be the best guy in your arcade, you go to another arcade and get yes. absolutely deleted at Street Fighter or whatever. And for him to kind of overcome that and play in an, an international team is outstanding. It really is. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw some of his ability to just seemingly almost win rounds by himself sometimes in that game. Like some of those plays he was making were ridiculous. He had to do that a lot on his old team. So he's always got that potential to come out with those big plays. And Dust 2 is a map where that could definitely happen as well. Third map of this series. I'm really not sure where this one's going to go because Envy, I think in the first game of this tournament, they won Dust 2 like 16 2, didn't they? They may have. I think However, they However, Dust 2 can betray you in that respect. Oh, yeah. They're not going to get a 16-2 every day. Um, it's I can't believe the score of Nuke, to be honest, with... I feel like that Nuke should have been a 16-2 from what we saw. But here we are. It was a 16-13 ultimately. So um, now the question is, what will we see here? <coughs> we shall soon find out. Slightly out of focus camera. Or webcam, rather. That's a pretty tidy facility, though. Something good. It's a very tidy facility. It I always find me, it. Yeah. I always find it weird that they have that little window behind them into what, like the kitchen. In Complexity's HQ, it kind of loosely reminds me of that. The Complexity HQ is in the Dallas Cowboys facility, so it's all state-of-the-art stuff, blank check stuff, right? So they have these. They have these gaming rooms where you can set the window so you can't see out, but people can see in. The point of that being that you can walk past or observe the players without disturbing them, without oh, being wow. a distraction in the background of their monitor and so on. So that was uh, that was really cool. <coughs> Not quite there with this setup, but it is, it's nice. It's clean, consistent surface for the chairs. The chairs look comfortable. It's all good. We have some rickety chairs upstairs in the gaming room. It's giving me some backache, almost. I can't sit up with a proper posture. Really? Yeah. I've got a Herman Miller at home. Right. I bought the Aeron. I went for the super size because I got a fat ass. I don't have a fat <laughs> ass, actually. Smix says I have a bubble butt. Um, I'll take that. That's, that, that's fine. Bad. It's enough. It's a good chair, though. But yeah. you sit in it, and immediately your posture is just better than if you have like a, a cheaper chair, let's say. Gotcha. Anyway, it's pistol time. Or is it knife time? It's pistol time. The third map, the knife round has come and gone already, and Gen G will be starting on the T side. Support grenades as they breach long. They've gone long with all Glocks. A curious approach. It looks like it's going to work for them, though. Long is open for the taking. Automatic spotting some players towards mid. Now, do Envy put a player back to the A site? I think the answer is probably yes. But just as I say that, Thomas is actually thinking it's B. They've fallen for this fake. They've rotated a couple of players over to the B site. Thomas was the first man to spot anyone towards A. But the bomb's going to go down with zero damage done. Mid to B smoke from Long. Absolutely baited. They've got flashes for the retake envy. Legia with a diffuse kit as well. They've got the opening frag and a oh. team kill to even things up. Not the way they wanted it to go, but can they make up for it? Perhaps they can. Kusta far back on long. Doesn't really have the tool for the job and down he goes, leaving automatic on short. One versus two. The bomb's not planted for him either, so he has to press the action. Legia, he's alone, but he has a kit and uh, this really hasn't worked out the way that Genji were looking for. Kill after time as well, after the round has been won. Bonus kill for Legia, first round for Envy. It's looking so good for Genji. They get the bomb down on A in a 5v5, but then the post plants go against them. Oh man, the flashbang from Legia made a big difference there for Envy on the retake. Allowed Mihu to eventually line up that kill. And then Automatic, just not in the right position on short. Even though he got some kills from here, he couldn't win the round. With the bomb plant though, oh, an instant buy and an Shut instant it down. kill. Oh, Nifty wants more as well with this scalp. Okay, he's having second thoughts now. He's giving his team the advantage. Let's just calm it down because Genji's buy is monstrous in this second round. They've got Galils, they've got an AK. 
you've got to be very careful that you don't give away those fights too easily. And the flash is great. It's fantastic. Nifty gets caught in the open. And now a fast mid to B could be on the cards. Bentex just fighting, though. A second kill from the main map. Minute 13 on the clock. Gen G with plenty of time to consider their options. Calix down to 30 now. Envy have a lot of problems. And who's even in position to make a forward play? Thus, two, one of the harder ones to maybe do that. Especially at this stage. Thomas having a look through the doors with his UMP. Behind the barrel is Thomas. 48 seconds. Exist is creeping into B at the same time, spotted by the doors. But that's a great snap from him. And Thomas gets caught out. The dream is collapsing for Envy. Legia now, one versus three. If he finds the right player, this could quickly escalate, but not sure if he'll go for it just yet. I presume he's trying to hide. Bentep's hunting on long. If he got a sound cube, maybe he would consider something, but indeed he's just trying to hold on to his rifle as Genji will tie the score early. The power of the second round force spice shining through again, especially on maps like Dust2, where you can pretty easily take fights. It's much harder for the CTs to use their nades to maybe back away and, and sort of keep at a favorable position. Uh-oh, the gear has been spotted. One bullet to the dome from Bentet. And we are back to an even scoreline, not to an even economy though. MV have basically no money. They have to force into this round, but they're not gonna like the look of it. So satisfying to land those. Sadly, I never do. Double scouts from Envy in response. They are forcing straight back here on Dust 2. Automatic watching the cross. So we've got three scouts on deck. Should be in for a good time. A double peek from Legia and Sin uh, Nifty. I said Snifty. Mihu with a deagle. He's taken some ac some presence in mid. Kriya's got to be careful. Deploying some grenades. Will he expect Mihu to be so close? The gun is out after all. Oh my god, that's straight in the face though. Big problems now for Gen G as Envy turn things around once more. And it continues. Mihu looking for an ace at this point with the Desert Eagle. Three clean one shots. No follow up shot required. There's rifles all over the floor. Genji trying to group back up to give themselves a chance in this one. As you said, James, those rifles on the floor, but not recovered by Envy, which maybe gives Genji a way into this round. The issue is these scouts at range can still be very solid. And at this point, you can probably get away with just aiming for tags to the chest because you know the pistol players are behind you. You know you've got a good advantage in this round. And Mihu has pushed top mid, so he knows that they need to be ready towards B. Legia missing the first chance, but that will allow the rotate to begin. Nade lands, takes him down to below half health, but there's a second man just arriving on the site. It's Kalix who can try and help, and they are looking to work together. Mihu's even on the flank. This round is over. Legia lands the final shot, and it is a back and forth affair at the start of Dust 2. That is some individ individual sunshine from Mihu. Not much you can do when you get digged like that. Just got to hold your hands up and say, sometimes you get one digged. And many of them did. Okay, so there's two shots in the third one, but still. Sometimes it be like that. But hey, from the Gen G point of view, it's round number three. So the perfect time for that to happen, if it is going to happen. And the forces will continue as both teams trade rounds. Always makes for interesting counter-strike in this situation. Is there a flash for Kusta? No. Creeps in any way. Nobody in the mid position for Envy. Playing range, Mihu covering it from here. But there's a potential for a smoke to be put down and a focus to be made on the B-bomb site. Maybe your concerns in that respect, he gets closer to spawn. Oh, he's been chopped in half by Mihu. Automatic now, very close with the scout. That flashbang's perfect though from Nifty. Support utility allows a take of mid from Envy. Kriaz sitting at long. 
Thomas playing another close range angle with the MP9, and that fight should pretty much secure this round. Should lock it in for them. Genji just getting picked apart in some of these rounds here. Across the entire map, they're losing a couple of fights, and then they get put in a position where they need some hero performances. Heroic performances is how you actually say that in English. Push in, flash counter. Bentex trying to go in first with the CZ. The gear waiting in the wings with the AK-47, though. He actually takes a lot of damage there. Bentex with the CZ, tapping away. He's only going to get one kill, though, and Exist can't follow up. Mihu having a good start to this game. Gets himself a quad kill in that one. And with that, I imagine things will calm down. Consecutive round finally won by a team means Eco for the opposition. That being Gen G. 2,000 bucks per person. Again, simple support flashbang can take you a very long way. Seeing a lot more 5.7s and Tech 9s and CZs of late, but notable that Bentet has a CZ75 out. A focus on long from Genji. There's one flash on Kusta. An incendiary will slow things down. Thomas playing the corner. Has a HE in his hands. Ooh. Kriaz will collect. He's alone. And if you look at the radar, you'll see that there is no support for Thomas in this position whatsoever. Normally, if you've got some, a push coming in on long... Oh, the... Well, the flashbang is too shallow. They're focusing on the corner. So Thomas has a great position to deal with everything. But again, normally if you're playing around the pit, a player on the A site will throw flashes behind for you to <laughs> swing and peek. This is so sad. Where's the AK? Where is it? Poor Kooster. Oh, he's got it! That's pretty cool. Impressive. Oh, nifty jiggly. He's just taking a shot. Kooster trying to tap tap away. He's got to be aware of the flank, and I'm not sure he is. Look, he is going to swing. MP5. Oh, my God. That spray has not gone anywhere close. Legia is able to close it out. I assume if you were DMing with the MP7, you haven't spent much time with the MP5 then, James. They are in the same slot. Um, the only thing that the MP5 serves a purpose for is spraying through smoke without having traces. Outside of that, it is uh, worse than the MP7 in every stat that's relevant that I can remember. So while I have it equipped on the CT side, I don't use it. That's fair. Ooh, back to long from Kriaz, and Thomas is locking down this position at the start of this round as well. Gets an early kill for his team, but look at the response from Gen G. Quick play through mid. This could be a good position to get control off, but Kalix gets a spam through the tunnels, and now Gen G are just going to commit to this quickly. Nifty's aware, though. He's got the scout shot, and the two players on the B site, well, they both fall. That means Gen G now have a chance. They can get this bomb down, and they can maybe win this 2v5. Mihu up close, free kill for him. That makes things worse for Bentet. But it's Bentet, and that's a problem for the CTs as well. Playing tight angles, but he falls off as Mihu peaks, and that's going to leave him exposed. Round number five, coming the way of Envy. This being the last map of the series, let's not forget. Loser jettisoned into the sun, never to be seen again. Not too shy, be a kill from Kalix. We saw a quick switch from Kalix and Nifty on the B-Box site as to who was watching what. And they both got uh, taken out. But here we are, five to one. A timeout from Gen G as they consider their options, maybe for the future, as they're all very close to AK armor and no grenades right now in terms of their money. Who's doing the talking? I can't see anyone talking right now, to be honest. There's only four of the players here, though, right? The other one, you can see his head in the bottom left. Oh, you can. I never noticed that. Yeah. Right. Well, it looks like Genji is still figuring out what they want to do in this round. They have not bought anything yet. As soon as I say that, though, Exist buys a scalp. So that suggests a half buy into this round. Still with the potential to do something. Oh, boost over the top for Nifty. Automatic was watching for it. That shot landed, but it didn't do that much damage. Nifty's still alive and healthy on 78 HP. 
Genji will continue to wait for picks. Bentet has bought the AK, by the way. I missed that. That must have been a last second buy from him. So he's going for the one hero rifle in this round. I love a hero rifle. Five for five is Bentet. Got an aggressive setup from Envy as Genji quietly moves forward. Like he has the fall away angle, run boost, avoids the AWP, and his position has been compromised. Oh, that's a lovely shot from Legia, however. A fadeaway HG grenade and a great burst from Mihu. Thins the numbers, flashbang support as well. Existing automatic remain, two versus four. USP versus Scout Legia being a nuisance and just slowing the push. He needs this bomb plant, he needs the money. Worst case scenario, here comes the jumping shot from Legia. The scout attacking from Thomas. No more damage will be done. Force of five for Envy, six to one. This is looking good for Envy. Getting rounds together on the CT side of Dust2. Oftentimes the more challenging side of this map, but with a strong start, Envy won't have to worry as much about that. Really nice shot from Legia midair, and then Mihu just going in and out towards that ramp position, making sure his teammates could rotate over, which they do. Bomb plant for Gen G, though, means they are very much in with a buy in this round, including an AWP for automatic. And Bentet still has money for the AK as well, so everything fine for Gen G into this upcoming round. We have got the two AWPs of Nifty, just spotted that player towards mid. Automatic will be able to tuck into the corner, though. And it looks like a slow start to the round with a default setup from Genji. No one in B just yet. Big focus on mid here. Flashbang's gone the wrong way. Now Kusta, I was going to say he's in position for a pop flash through mid doors, but he has no flash. Legia is towards the A bomb site, waiting for a short push. This has been left open by NV. They're inviting Genji to this position. But will three players be enough? Mihu makes his way towards long. Now, he can throw a flashbang behind Legia should he require one. If they post up smokes on short, Legia can throw the incendiary. Let's see what happens. The gear being committed to the bomb site might not be the best shout, so he decides to reposition to Car. Was it Envy who had that cool one-way smoke on Car previously? I don't think it was them, but I remember someone dropped a smoke. It might have been Fnatic who dropped a smoke here at Car and just managed to snipe above it. The gear won't be doing that though; he'll just be holding the more standard angles, tight angle to work with. Someone ducking under his shot there, and the gear instantly gives up on it. So the bomb is going to be planted. Envy won't be able to deny this. It will have to be the full-on retake. Kriaz is top mid, looking for rotation towards short. Envy had well, two man pushing long, but they've gone back to that long position. Kalix looking vulnerable. The flashbangs are here, though. The burst takeout exists. That might help Kalix survive. Mihu with two. Racking up the kills once again. But look at the trades here. Bentet and Automatic defending the A bomb site. Goes too wide, though, Bentet. And now it's a 2 on 2. Kalix, he spots Automatic, but he can't finish off the job. Legia trying to jiggle, trying to bait, but there will be no bite from Automatic. Four kills as Genji moved to two. I was a bit worried that. Genji might not get the best post-plant positions there, considering they were all committed to the site. They had three players trapped behind those site boxes, but they worked those positions pretty effectively. Even though Mihu gets this first kill and the follow-up, Automatic is always able to sort of trade out his teammates. He even peeks into the ramp there. And I think Bentet's position was also a very important one, just playing behind that box and making sure they couldn't push up to the site to run it down. Kriaz already getting fully blinded, looking at the floor. Thomas is going to get the kill, and Mihu's also up close. This A long explosion is not effective for Genji in this round, and Mihu is going crazy aggressive. Exist is going to catch that out, but it's still a massive advantage in this round for Envy. Yeah, I think Exist maybe made a step to bait the push from Mihu, realizing that he was close, unless I'm mistaken, but still, to what avail. I don't know what happened with one of those flashes from Gen G during the execute, but the player who was out first definitely ate a teammate's flashbang, trying to avoid the rest of them. Thomas's angle will be all too much. Automatic left now. Oh, Thomas pulling the grenade out. He's trying to do too much there. 
Don't need to pull a grenade out and leave yourself exposed. And maybe that gives Automatic a chance. He's got one minute on the clock. One versus four, now made three. A smoke to create space. Got to walk, though. Once you go through those doors, some of your footsteps can be heard from a short player. 39 seconds. Is he looking to make a play towards B here? Looks like he wants to go for something. Nifty in the lower tunnel starting to wonder about T-spawn. He should hear something here, though. Misses the shot, however. Now Automatic has a smoke. He realizes where the hole is. Oh, my God. Okay. Trying to outplay them, but too many man on road. And Envy make it to seven. Yeah, Genji just getting too far behind at the start of that round. Take a look at these eight long fights again, where Thomas was just about... <laughs> able to spot the player out. I, he was kind of blind, but there was a bit of a gap between the flashes, which allowed him to see. Yeah, it didn't look like the coordination was fully there for Genji on that one, with Kriaz kind of getting caught in the open. As you said, I think it was a team flash that blinded him, and automatic Ooh. blinded by the flash at mid. Nifty going up for the fight. Not successful in doing so, though. Slower start to the round again from Genji. I can't believe Nifty got tagged in that engagement. I know, right? And automatic's got 91 HP. A classic two-man push. Flashbang comes at the right time, but the duel is a little too early for him. Not quite ready to exist. Instant response, though, from Gen G. What do they make of this? Two-man push in B tunnels. What of the remaining three? Legia on the second AWP. Once again in the same position. I thought those grenades might come a bit later once the smokes get posted up. Should they? It's a mid to B smoke. No smoke on cat just yet. Kalex will drop a flashbang to take an angle. 49 seconds for Genji. No stranger to a slow round. You can see Mihu holding a flash again from that position. You can do a fadeaway flash that goes off behind a palm tree and the T's never see it coming. Forward and Sendry from Legia. Mihu maybe just playing bait. There's a palm tree flash. You just saw it being deployed there. Not in position really to move forward now, especially with the smoke up. It becomes very awkward indeed. Not sure whether he should focus on the left or the right. Has he got the flicks here, Legia? Got the attempt here. Now we've got Mihu in the smoke. Surely it's a master strength and lining up for him. Finishes off the second one. 18 seconds and it all collapses. Eight rounds for Envy. Gen G ran out of nades pretty quickly there. They only had one smoke to move into the A site. Normally you want at least two to be able to cover off some of those angles. And then obviously just getting caught out by Mihu playing on that goose position alongside his teammate. Nice early shot from Magia. And then as soon as they commit to the bomb plant, they are screwed. Automatic had to land that shot with the AWP and he wasn't able to do so. 8-2 now for Envy. They are really starting to run away with this one. So that palm tree in the goose position is not solid. So if you're a CT in goose, if you hold left and right click, and you're pointing mostly up. If you, let's say, step backwards as you release the flashbang, the flashbang essentially goes directly up and pops behind the palm tree. So if you're pushing short, you can't see it, but it will flash you. And then you can make a play. But all the other grenades made it a little awkward to peek with that. But that's a rare one. I learned that one from Alex, actually. He was briefly in this tournament. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good flashbang to know. Very simple to do once you do know. 8-2 to two in favor of Envy. Indeed, Genji on pistols. Really struggling on this T side. They've got intentions towards A long. Plenty of utility. Thomas is going to get caught with a grenade in his hand. Random emergence through the smoke. Playing the numbers game, Genji. They have position. They have a rifle as well. They also have Legia with an AWP looking to hold things down here. That's a clean shot onto Kusta. Looking for more as well. Got support from Mihu to clean up. Not too much damage done. Envy move to nine. A little scary when Thomas dies at long without getting a single kill. But the rest of the team make up for it. Oh, wow. We've got an SG out from Exist. Again, a few players have been picking up the SG. We haven't seen too much from it. I think Brolam was one of the players who was getting a bit of success with that gun. It's become a situational gun now, as opposed to, I think with the with the old fire rate, 
the spray was so easy to spray past and you could just run around and do whatever you wanted with that gun because I had massive tagging, 100% armor penetration. But now the fire rate kind of sucks, so it's like a has certain implementations, like if you're on a silo with nuke, we've seen it become a, a staple for certain players in that respect. We'll see how Exist chooses to use it. It's a very tight angle indeed. Pop flash through the middle doors and it will invite some utility from Mihu. Thomas with an aggressive off angle once more. You can see he's got a clear shadow advantage if somebody wanted to walk through. Short being taken now from Genji. Basically three players on the B bomb site for Envy. Maybe feeling vulnerable. I wonder if they'll go for a push. Mid control for Genji. In through the mid doors. More of a standard round from Genji. Just taking some control to begin with. I think this is the sort of approach we need to see from them. But Thomas has pushed a long. Kriaz is ready for it. That's an important kill to find. What's the response from Gen G though? Are they going to commit to this B site? Because if they do, there are three CTs oh, there. there but go. with a second kill on A, that's going to make all the difference. They can come back to this A site and it is going to be easy pickings. Again, Gen G plays so many slow rounds. It's always a risk to make that play, trying to catch him off guard. Doesn't work for Thomas, and that's the opening that Gen.G will capitalize on in this round. For only their third round on Dust2. Been so rare to get T rounds in this game, of Dust2 that is. Kusta 2 for 10, Kriaz 3 for 10. Because it's not much better. Still time to turn things around. Six rounds are possible in this half. As unlikely as it has seemed the way these rounds have gone. I can see there's plenty of money for some of the players. Nifty and Calyx are looking pretty flush at presence. Thomas certainly not. He's been doing a lot of dying recently, but the rest of the team can buy, so... They don't have too many big issues for now. Definitely nice for Genji to save with all five alive as well. Make sure that they build up at least some money on the T side of things. Pretty surprising, you could say, seeing Nifty 5 for 4 right now. He's had the AWP a lot with how the money's been going on this CT side, but can't really complain with the way the rest of the team have been playing. If anything, we've seen more AWP impact from Legia so far in this game. And Nifty crosses Ooh. mid safely. <laughs> I've, I've, the, the fact they jumped there was scary with where the smoke was. Yeah. 152 is a good time to shoot through the doors if you see a smoke. 152 or 151. So if you're guessing, go for one of those times. I'll wait for the tweeter, thanks. Early push from Envy through B doors, it seems. B halls, rather. They've been doing that a lot. And it might just pay off this time. Mm. Again, Genji, the penguins are moving up short. Close together, share the body heat. So they can trade frag. Oh man, the patience from Gen G. The Krieg pays off. They simply wait. That's something the SG is still very good for, just holding angles like that. You can pretty easily control that spray. Nifty with a nice shot on the AWP. He's got to be careful. There are more players close by, but he's going to rotate away from B. They're leaving B wide open, and Mihu pulls a nade out at the wrong time. Bentet still making a play onto A, getting up close, flashing behind himself. Where's the bomb going to go, though? Is it going to try and follow him through? Maybe not now. They've spotted Thomas. They realize that B is probably the weaker site, and little do they know, it's wide open right now. They're going to get into position. Kriaz doesn't have a smoke, and that could be an issue. Ligi has got the angle. Oh, not the shot, though. Bomb will be planted. Oh, my God. Kusa just absorbing bullets, taking licks through mid doors. Down to one HP. Look at the swing. They know that there's only one player on the site. Oh, my God. He's dead. He's dead. He can do absolutely nothing. Get on the bomb. They're faking it. Okay, that's fine. Thomas through the smoke. Some might wonder why Kusa just died like that. But if he manages to kill the other guy, they don't know he's 1 HP. They know he got shot in the head through the door, but they don't know he's 1 HP. If he kills the other guy, then the threat of him pushing may stop the other guy from defusing the bomb. So that's the play he's trying to make. Unsuccessful, but noble. The man died on his sword. It was a very 
confusing round across the board. I mean, Bentet somehow getting into that sort of CT position, a very confusing one. Kubin is a happy man right now, though, as it's looking more and more likely Envy may be our last team through to the playoffs. They've got a 10-3 lead right now. Thomas into pit, Mihu up close. This long hold has been pretty solid for these two players. When it's the early aggression from Gen G, Envy's counter utility seems to be on point. They've got the first two kills again, and Gen G are clutching at straws to come back into this round. The dying rounds of the first half. Envy still have a chance to have a monstrous score. Thomas with a very new position. On old dust two boosted up here, I think you could see through both doors. Oh, and still dies. He's doing a lot of dying. I think his frustrations will increase. A run boost from short, and just in case there's an AWP. And Envy now have a decision to make. Do you hold short, do you hold long? They can't abandon both. They can't be kind of halfway in between. So Mihi will have long for the time being, but Kusa is here for the wide swing. They've left him alone and now Legia has got problems. Down goes Kusa though, the only man spotted towards long and he falls back to hold for the retake. One player is still on the B site right now. It's a double AWP retake as well. These long range fights could be crucial. Legia is still waiting patiently. The rest of his teammates getting into position but automatic goes at just the wrong time and Bantet has to do it all. 1v3, he's already got the first man. Trapped on the site itself though. 12 HP, they're gonna start to close the distance. Bantet hears the steps, he knows they're here. He's gonna go for the spray, somehow surviving but finally Nifty finishes the job. Another round for Envy. Again, these rounds are getting surprisingly close but Envy always seem to have the edge. Mihu is 24-7. And it's great. Again, Thomas is just taking licks on long, but Envy are coming out on top. It's about the team play and the team result. They've made his job tough, Gen G, but Envy are still overwhelming. Looking at the kill board, it looks like Gen G have run out of steam. They've gassed like a fighter in an early UFC. Tank Abbott, maybe. All the HE come after the smoke. There it is. They're not deep enough just yet, though, but they have intentions. Calyx will preempt them as Genji slow things down. Slowly moves towards lower tunnel. A four versus five for Genji with plenty of utility, but not plenty of frags. Ooh. Good shot from Kusta, but good timing for Envy on the peak. Both players peak at the same time. Kusta with the AWP can only aim at one of them. At least Kusta did choose to specifically fire at the one man, but now Kalix has given it a go with the AWP. Second kill on the round for him, and Genji have a 2v4 to try and come back from. I feel bad for Bente. He's been in a few of these positions now that are very difficult. Exist trade, second headshot for Exist. Maybe a way onto this A site. Mihu's gone into the open. Oh Mihu my goes God. down. Great shot from Exist, and it's into a 1v1. Kalix was the man holding the B site to begin with. Now he's got to come back to A. Exist doesn't really know what's safe. Shields himself from short, focuses on the slopes. Alex has a HE grenade, but he can't pull a grenade out now. He's completely exposed. There's a shadow advantage for Exist. He'll have the hot, just the jump, but Calix knows he's crouched peaks. Look at him going the crab walk there. Exist not ready for that one. Taken by surprise, and it's 12 rounds for Envy at half time. Despite Genji having some success with their pace, when it comes down to the end of the round, not the case really. No consecutive rounds there. 12 for Envy as they move to the last half in the last map. Do Genji have anything left? Find out after the break.
Envy look to be running away with the last spot in the playoffs if this is set to continue. It's a 12-3 lead for them at the half. The pistol round could be decisive if they were to win it. We've got the buys coming through right now. Nifty gets a P250 drop for him. Couple of nades for Envy on top. On the Gen G side, they've got two players picking up the utility. And it looks like a slow start to this all-important pistol. Everybody being very careful. Some CTs like to play top mid on a pistol round. Some presence shown by Calix. Molly doesn't quite go where he wanted it to. I think just buying big box was ideal. And then if you make a pilgrimage up towards short. Nobody on the A-bomb site. Smoke and a flashbang for Genji. And now they start to get curious. Bentet edging forward somehow survives. Spots Mihu lurking. Hello. It's your turn to be patient, Genji. Here comes the swing, though. Bentet deleted on the ramp. Kusa popping out from blue, and he holds long. He won't be able to hold the site, though. That's for damn sure. Envy are already in position. They decide to plant for short. And Genji don't have any players coming into that position. There is a smoke on Kusta, though. That could be really valuable to try and get that defuse. If you smoke short or even smoke the bomb, it's going to be difficult for Envy to close on those fights. And Envy already losing the first man. Kriaz popping up with the kill. Trades on towards the bomb site. Kusta going in first, but Legia lines them up and Kalix closes it out. 13 3 Envy. They are so far ahead now. They really are. This may force the hand of Gen G. And it may be a quick one as far as Envy are concerned. They've won both pistol rounds now. They were reset in the first half. We'll see if they are in the second. Here comes the force by double scouts for Kusa on automatic. Nifty with one of his own. Double peek from high and low. Manages to tag and avoid getting hit. An automatic now may be in a little spot of trouble. Ooh, there we go. Taste of your own medicine. Those scout fights down mid are so scary at the pro level. If you want to get a, a feel for what that is like, you can play open qualifiers and get wrecked by some semi-pros that you've never really heard of. I've done that before on Face It. I lost horribly. And you get a really good idea as to how quick these kills truly are. Automatic looking to do the same with the scout, but Thomas takes him down. The flank is coming. Mihu is watching for it. He's not anymore, though. The fights on the site could be crucial, though. 3v3, Bentet not going to get the flank. Mihu with the all-important turnaround, and that might just settle this round. Exist waiting by the boost position. Kusta showing some presence. Exist trying to peel around the corner. Nice flick from Kusta. There's no one long because Mew's made his way towards the top mid. He's left Thomas alone and there's a trade from Exist. Perhaps he can collect a rifle now, but he doesn't know what is safe. Starting to move and maybe Envy will re regret this rotation from Mew. Oh boy, has he seen Exist there? Maybe he has. Oh, surely he has. Exist with the AK and the burst and the taps, but not this time. Got some important kills for his team, but misses on the maybe most important occasion. Oh, I was so scared when Mihu leaves his teammates to go back to mid here. Kusta landed some great kills with the scout, but it's not enough in the long run. Even with that gap in the smoke being exploited by Kriaz, it's close, but not close enough. MV up to a 14-3 lead, just two rounds away from the win. Got to give some props to Legia as well. If you'd have told me I was going to cast Legia versus Exist in 2020, I'd have been very confused, but we are seeing it. And right now, it is Legia who's getting the better of that battle. 15 for 7. He's having a solid game for himself. I think for Envy as well, it will be nice to get this win and to get some more practice time in. Now that they've played some official games, if they can get this victory, they get a good amount of time off to get some more practice hours on the server to make sure that everything is exactly in order for them ahead of those playoffs. They aren't confirmed yet, though. They still need two more rounds, and Genji will be forcing to try and keep themselves in this game and in this tournament. Envy out long. I'll keep things relatively quiet. 
Keep the guns out, boys. Legia runs past Leighton. Maybe Kuz to think that's the lurker. But Thomas is also here. He could spot one down mid. Automatic with one of two scouts. Up they go. They have not been challenged just yet. There we go. Holding down the flank. A retake of A with two scouts, a FAMAS, an MP9, one flashbang. No defuse kit. Bento making his way to spawn. Now, do Gen G have to... I mean... I feel like maybe a save is in order here. Yes, they've got to win 12 rounds pretty much in a row, but they're not going to win this round. I think that much is clear. No kit on these players. Mm. There are upgrades to be had, though. Kriaz is moving forward, but what have you got to gain at this point? Lose the FAMAS, and then what more is there for you in the next round? Well, we shall see. He just threw away his rifle there, I think. Yeah, I agree. Wow, it looks like Genji might be going out, not with a roar, but with a whimper here on Dust2. 15-3 down. It has been, I think, a, a pretty impressive performance for Gen G in some of these games, considering the situation of the two stand-ins. But apparently this is a step too far for them on Dust2. They need 12 in a row just to keep themselves in the tournament. At least they've got some guns together for round 19. We'll see what they can do with them. Legira is the expendable man. Will there be a flash for him? Benteta waits, tight angle. Just walk straight into it. The Mac 10 for swinging, surely. Well, he's done what he could, Bentet. Maybe his best work is over for this tournament. Still, there is a man advantage for Gen G. All the players with rifles of some description, automatic somehow still alive. Some tagging would be fantastic, but now his cover has gone. He's exposed and he can do no more. Three versus two all of a sudden. Me, you in control of long. Two players on the site to focus on short and CT. Smokes up and uh, it goes from bad to worse for Gen G. It's the Swedish stand ins to try and keep Gen G in the tournament. Kriaz is going to creep up close to the bomb site, but Kalex is in a pretty good position. The flash is even set up for him. They're taking a lot of time here, and Mihu is flanking this entire time. The bomb's in the open. Kalex with the first kill, and that is it. Envy, your last team through to the playoffs with a 16-3 win here on Dust2. Not the final map we were hoping for, James, but I'm sure Envy will be very happy with the win. You can see the smiles on their faces. It's nice to see a smile on Thomas's face for once. It is a completely one-sided affair on Dust2. That was... A somewhat underwhelming finish after the back and forth we saw and the almost comeback in the second map by Genji, but there we go. Maybe that comeback was more important than we realized. Completely ran out of steam on Dust2 and Envy stormed them from start to finish. Again, it's almost with a, a tough job on Long was the only highlight really for Genji and it didn't really yield many rounds either. Nice celebration from Kuvin, the coach for Envy. Yeah, I think over on the CT side for uh, for Envy there, even though they lost long in a couple of rounds, the rounds where they actually saw Genji go for the early aggression, they still seem to get the kills because it just looked like Genji didn't quite have the, the flashes and everything in place to take that position, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, well, it just got deleted. I'm not sure what else to add to that, really. A very difficult game of Counter-Strike towards the end there from, for, from Genji, but again, Considering they, they've got two stand-ins, I think the yeah. effort they put in and the pacing they were able to do on the T side, I think it's really scary and difficult to play against for, for CT teams who... You, you saw repeated punishes for trying to flank, trying to be proactive, trying to get information and, and punish them for their slow play. Still, Envy managed to turn things back around and win most of those rounds, but uh, it is hard to play against, as we can see from Train, which is probably their best example at the moment. Yeah, and I think they, they probably got one of the biggest upsets we're going to see at the tournament with that win earlier against OG. Like That's that's already a great result. I think they did way more than anyone expected. Yeah. Uh, for Envy, I think it's, it's the same situation I was saying previously, where I think it's nice for them to get some time in the actual server so that they can maybe now practice in this next week. They know what they need to work on, but we won't get to see Envy for a while because we're going over to the blind spot.